So we've just been around the factory. Didn't film us too much in the factory because we don't want to give away any trade secrets with Bateman. But anyway, we've got some classics in the field over here. And apparently there's one of the first ones made. So there's an RV track. Got a, um, it's like a Hilo, is it? No, it's a 2001. These are originally really, really light machines. That was where Bateman made his name by making lightweight machines. Apparently there's a trail sprayer in here somewhere as well. I wonder is it that one because that you can't see a cab on it. They need to build a museum, I think. Could that be trailed? Paintwork's definitely got better over the years. There's a high low here, so this is a, a really early one. So what's this one? This might be. This is D Reg. I can't see the reg. No, I think it's this one. Or has that fell off it? No, maybe that's the original one. Yeah. This is the very first sort of self-propelled proper sprayer. But nature's kind of reclaiming it. I presume that's the trail one there because there's no cab on the front of that. But you can't see the drawbar because of the nettles. But yeah, look at them wheels and motors. Got a motor drive in there and a reduction hub. Whereas now it's like one big motor doing it all. It's got a Deutz engine in it. They've obviously been John Deere now for a few years though. It's like a sprayer graveyard. Doesn't actually look to be a lot wrong with them though. And it's interesting to see this boom. So the contour boom for the 24 meters hasn't changed much in years. You know, they obviously got it right first time. You know, even the modern one today have that spring arrangement, them dampers and everything. They're just, just made right. So this is sort of like 1995 again, boom looks very similar. And then pumps on the back, whereas now it's on the side. And then this, I think this is a prototype. The, the RV track, so it's kind of like a, a chassis floating rear axle. It's very fast tracky actually. Engine and transmission. Seems to be underneath yet, yeah, it seems to have a bonnet on it. And then we've got an early 36 meter one here. Fifty-one plate, so what's that? Twenty years old maybe. Gone green. Again, nature taking over. So you've heard of Project Merlot. Well, there's a Project Bateman if anyone's brave enough to do one up. Fresh paint of coat. It looks like it's got barnacles on the bumper. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of very, um, what's the word? Chernobyl, with all those things rotting away in the fields and left. While I'm in Somerset, I thought it'd be rude not to call it Paris tractors and see what they've got in. See if they've got any classics in. A nice yard full. It's a nice lake, isn't it? Got some mint 939s. And a couple of 724s. And an unusual one at the end. It looks really small because it's in a different colour for some reason. And some John Deere's there for the John Deere fans. Old one at the end there, 8310, and a fleet of Massies. It's not farming, but who thought Castle Coombe was more than just a racetrack? It's quite windy. So this is the village of Castle Coombe. Oh, this is a tiny one.
quiz time. What kind of sheep are they? Got the zebra horse as well. Subaru just going out onto the race circuit. That over there, that white line, that's, that's photo of telling cells. It's a load of solar panels inside the race course. Explains why the barley was weedy. This is a field of grass, though. But that barley field was over there. Looks like everyone's woken up. Chocolate box houses. The houses are smaller than the drill. Definitely more than just a racetrack, Castle Coombe. That clock's 600 years old. church has got one of the oldest clocks in Britain and that's what you've just seen. Also Castle Coombe is where they filmed War Horse so that was a memorial in the church of it like a lot of pictures. I've never seen War Horse so I wouldn't know but some people might have. Castle Coombe. Look at the size of that tree. Wait Charlotte run over to the scale. It's massive. And stand, and then there's the manor house. It's that big. I'm going to stride the base out. I think it's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve. So the trunk's twelve foot. If you cut that in half, you could have quite a decent coffee table. Well, dining table. It's massive. I never realised until today that like Castle Coombe was uh, more than a racetrack. So that was quite interesting seeing that and there's a track down as well, so that's what the cars were doing. I'm in the Cotswolds tomorrow as well and the day after. So if anyone thinks of anything interesting I could go and have a look at tomorrow, let me know. I'm on a bit of a busman's holiday, which is a farmer's holiday, where I like to see machinery and fields and things growing. That's about all for today. I hope you enjoyed the Bateman Relic field. Um, if you want to watch another video, it's up here. If you want to subscribe, it's over here. So anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Lots of new subscribers. Uh, tell me where you're from if you're new. And um, what's your favourite Bateman you've seen in the last two days? Leave a comment below. And there's a quick outro from Guion sent to me on Instagram. So don't forget, if you've got your outros, send them on Instagram.